So today we're out here on Little Bitterroot Lake in western Montana and if you watched our ice fishing shows from this winter you saw us out here uh, ice fishing for kokanee as well. It's a great little basin lake out here in western Montana and it's full of kokanee salmon, rainbow trout and, and not just regular rainbow trout but Gerard rainbow trout, the giants out of Canada that grow into the 20 pound range. Um, have you seen him yet, Mike? Yeah, he's a better fish. Yep. Well, he's not a giant, but he's better. Yeah, he's better. All right, got a nice kokanee here. Hey, we've been feeding through the small ones. We got some small ones earlier today, but we're getting into some good ones now and real pretty fish. We're gonna keep getting them. But the thing that really makes it a good kokanee lake is the mice of shrimp that have been in here since the 60s. The, the kokanee and the rainbows feed on the mice, the mice feed on the plankton, and it's just a great food web that happens out here. So it's a, it's a wonderful lake, very clean lake, a very picturesque lake, easy access, 20 minutes out of Kalispell, and it's a lake that we do guide on all season long. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about the gear that we were using to catch kokanee out here. And uh, the basic setup is uh, a standard flasher or dodger in this case. Uh, this is a double lot size dodger. We use sling blade dodgers and teardrop dodgers, all different kinds. This is a good basic setup, especially when you're pulling a larger uh, lure like the Brad's uh, uh, kokanee cut plug and these are really good when you have larger salmon that you're fishing for especially when you have salmon that are actually eating minnows and a lot of times you don't think about salmon eating minnows but these salmon will eat small fish as well as plankton and bugs and other types of things in the water what I love about the Brad's cut baits is the fact that you can open it and there's a cavity in here that you can put whatever type of scent or crushed bait, herring, tuna, uh, that you want. Today we were using scent, and we were using the new fire gel by Potskys, and we were using the anise scent. It's that licorice scent that you smell. And I just put a little bit inside the bait and closed it up, and as the water goes through there, then it carries that scent back. And you know, you can goop on this fire gel and it'll stay on all day. It's very strong, don't be afraid to use a lot. I don't, I don't think you can use too much. And then on the hook, and there's different ways to rig these. This is kind of a custom way uh, that we rig these kokanee cut plugs and so I can put a treble hook on it. And we're using the Potsky fire corn. Today the pink behind this chrome really seemed to be doing the trick. So I'll take a couple of pieces of the fire corn, and you can put a piece on every tine or just one or two tines. It seems that with two of the tines covered with fire corn, it makes a big difference. So you just put your fire corn on the hook. I like to put it on so the opening of the kernel of corn is facing back. If any scent is going to come out of there, that's how it's going to do it. And then, uh, so you can put two on, you can put three on. Doesn't hurt to leave one tine available. And then you just pull the hook up to the garage, snug the hook in the rubber band. You've got your scent inside the cavity, in case one or two of the pieces of corn come off, you've still got scent in here to attract those fish. We're fishing about a mile and a half an hour for these kokanee, one to 1.4, 1.5. Seem to be the ticket on the speed today. So standard dodger, lure, wedding ring spinner, uh, a small spoon. If you haven't tried the Brad's cut plugs for kokanee salmon, you really ought to try it. Don't forget your Potsky fire gel and your Potsky fire corn, and go out and catch some kokanee as well. You still there? I don't think he's on there. No? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's oh, on yeah. Oh, Good fish. Good fish. How far out is it, Mitch? Uh, I got it. He's back there. Oh, That's a nice fish. Real nice. It's pulling like a nice fish. There's no monster though. Alright. Okay, John. Yeah, here we time, go. time, time, time shine, bud. In the net. Nice. There we go. Just brought up this absolutely beautiful kokanee. Really, really, really nice sized fish, and it was a great fight when he was coming up. Another thing that's important for success on kokanee is having the right rod. 
Um, especially when you're downrigger fishing kokanee and you're pulling these fish out of deeper water, you need a rod that really has some flex to it. I don't use snubbers anymore. We all used to use the rubber snubbers because our rods were a lot stiffer. But these kokanee specific downrigger rods are parabolic, meaning you can pretty much bend them in half. So whether it's a Lama Glass or a G Loomis, there's lots of different ones out there. A good soft fiberglass rod with good backbone, but plenty of soft. You, got, you need a nice soft tip there to cushion the strike and not tear the hooks out of those mouths. So a nice average size kokanee for bitter at lake here. We see a lot of these 13 to 15 inch fish. These are solid three and four year old year class fish. And they go up to about 20 inches. The ones that really get on the shrimp and, uh, and get uh, bigger in a hurry. But this is a good solid bitter at kokanee salmon. I like to use six pound test, sometimes eight pound test, especially if you're around a lot of rainbows or brown trout or other larger fish. Um, and you, you know, you don't have to have 500 yards of, of, of uh, your six or eight pound monofilament on there. You can put plenty of backing on there. Get 150 yards of premium six or eight pound monofilament line. And that's all you need for kokanee salmon. We're not fishing 300 feet behind the boat, but a quality monofilament and a reel with a good drag is critical when fighting those hard fighting, hard pulling kokanee. That's a good one. Oh yeah, nice kokanee. Oh yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh yeah, that's a nicer one. In the net. In the net. <laughs> That's another nice 14, 15 incher. All right, we were just about to pack up and head out, but then one of the rods started going. Got this nice kokanee here in the last, last drift of the day. We actually might stick around, we don't know. Today's episode of Potsky Outdoors comes to you from Western Montana. We're on a lake that we've been before. Now you guys probably saw us ice fishing here this past winter. We're back now to chase kokanee. And this little bitter at lake is just a gem. It's one of the prettiest places you'll see you know, we're only about 30 minutes outside of Kalispell, and really you feel like you're out in the wilderness because you are, and you're in a place that is just loaded with some excellent kokanee fishing. Now, keep in mind, they do stock fingerling kokanee about two inches each, uh, roughly 26,000 of those a year, in addition to about 20,000 fingerling rainbows, and then another, you know, 5,000 seven to eight inch rainbows. Now, we didn't catch any rainbows today simply because we weren't targeting them. We went after kokanee, with different kokanee bugs, kokanee lures, uh, some brad stuff, all basically tipped with Potsky Firecorn. And we also used Potsky's new anise fire gel, put it on all of our baits, because you know what? We all know kokanee love anise, they love garlic, they love shrimp, all those different concoctions. We had all those today, and we went through windstorms, rainstorms, clear, cloudy. It was a day of all seasons. And we came out of here with a couple real nice kokanee, here in the beautiful mountains of Western Montana. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, Make sure to go to Potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.